current video. Okay, so uh, hi everyone. Um, just uh, started to uh, report on progress on uh, court 19 v19 version. Actually, I'm I have now uh, this running on on the Amazon on AWS server. Uh, before midnight, it should be ready. And then I can take uh, I can take uh, v22. I think it's the, that's the next uh, version that has been. No, no, no. It's 26. I think already. Like, oh, okay. No, but I mean the the newest one. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, <laughs> it goes really fast now. This all. Uh, yeah. It's. Uh, I need also uh, to talk with uh, Anton and Arthur about our credits because it's like uh, or no, no no i can also uh, i can also also arrange uh okay, cool. instance for and, you. and b, like the, it's option a and option b and there's they don't exclude each other they they can be seen complementary mm -hmm. uh namely uh, we can also uh make this whole pipeline more efficient because i presume that um okay many things are in python so maybe we should talk with somebody who is like with guys who could transfer this python like to optimize this python code because no no but, but uh, obviously the problem is not python the problem is nlp yeah because nlp is always about probabilities okay and then you need models to to model yeah. those probabilities yeah. so uh, yeah it's not yeah no no it's just like because actually it's like for each like <clears throat> the whole pipeline uh, exists uh, now from five big relatively big uh light weighted uh, spacey models mm -hmm. and of course uh, when you have when you do multi processing then in each process you 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 need to uh load five models it mm -hmm. means that if you have your uh, ram is uh, limited as always it, it may be the case uh, you will run o o out of your ram uh, yeah. very fast I think and you I crash told, i already told you that uh, every no no uh, i think for five models it's like 12 gb yeah that should be in ram so if you want to multiply processes of yeah, course yeah that's or you, you you have to change uh, process and uh, create kind of shared resources so uh, different processes will reuse the same uh, data frames all models and uh, in this case it, it will be much more uh, efficient i would say yeah but then it's like you need for to uh, to label a text you mm -hmm. need to run this model so my question is okay then the, this model is maybe used just by one text at once um uh, I think I think it's not necessary to change it uh, at the moment because we don't have like every minute update. <laughs> we have uh, update in, in few days, yeah. so it's still doable to do processing. The only thing that we started to look at uh, Airflow, so this is nice framework that actually can can uh, do uh, all these. Uh, kind of uh, monitoring and processing and uh, it's it's basically to build pipelines and uh, this tool actually allows to make uh, all processes transparent so you can just install it in different uh, points of pipeline and can you can see what goes wrong if something will fail so uh, it would be nice to investigate how to connect uh, this uh, core 19 uh, pre-processing pipeline to uh, Airflow okay. because a lot of people already requested it and, and uh, we, we actually get it, uh, we've got it installed in our infrastructure and some people already uh, have access and I don't know guys if you're interested to take a look because it seems to be like like very useful tool yep. for yeah, yeah definitely I mean like it, it's basically li like a replacement of cron tab jobs uh, uh, in data science <laughs> okay because you can schedule uh, on demand you can schedule um, uh, processing for example uh, it can be one process that continues the monitoring if uh, uh, coordinating collection uh, will be updated and as soon as will be updated it, it will be kind of webhook to download file uh, these uh, new papers and to run pre-processing again and after to inform 
after it will be ready. So it should go to Elastic, to MongoDB and, you know, whatever. So all these kind of uh, pre-processing steps uh, are actually possible to uh, organize with uh, uh, Airflow. Okay. So now we have instance, uh, I think it's even without uh, admin password. Let me check. So if you guys are interested, uh, we are more than, will be really happy if someone can help us to, to uh, integrate this in, in pipeline. Yeah. Yes, it's, I think it's without, uh, so look, uh, this is how it looks like. There are some examples. So, like 20 different examples, and uh, there is also graph, so you can see how different if different steps uh, we are uh, executed, and uh, you can actually run again if something failed, and also you can do like historical runs. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I think we need to to read documentation to get like. Uh, yeah. So so this is first thing that yeah. we're working on, and second thing. Uh, yeah, I, I already explained in, in previous call uh, that uh, we have more than one hundred thousands of uh, data sets or data files, uh, and uh, we have. Uh, team that does curation and data management but of course it's not feasible to, to just open every data set and check if some files uh, have uh, some private private information some sensitive data so we, we need some some classif to build some classifier that will do uh, this for us and after we'll be actually able to publish those data because now I think uh, it's probably 20% publicly shared after we, we already did the verification, but uh, a lot of files, they just nowhere. It's in draft mode. And uh, okay. also, also it was interesting situation. So one of uh, own, owners of data set, uh, he contacted uh, Harvard actually and complained that we uh, crawled some some data that uh, uh, they uh, published on GitHub, but uh, uh, this data set contained uh, pri some, some private information. Yeah, but, so, but our, it's not your business. I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. But of course, we removed uh, because uh, we removed data set because it's uh, not uh, our data, and also they removed from GitHub. But <laughs> it was interesting situation because uh, you should be aware that yeah. it already is published somewhere. And uh, in our situation, it's like transparent. So people can find it on Dataverse portal. But uh, at some point, if someone will clone repository and, uh, you know, if you have some sensitive data in this repository, so it means that someone else already has it and uh, it will be really difficult to remove. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so at, at some point, uh, these guys, uh, they got lucky that uh, <laughs> we're able to manage this properly. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, just because we have uh, Anton now on the call. And yeah. maybe that's, it's a more technical yeah. thing, but uh, I would like to talk about our credits on uh, Google and on Amazon because probably to process the next V something something version, we will need to use uh, relatively huge instances, uh, one huge instance with a lot of RAM, or we, uh, so we need credits for that, and we need to rethink how we can optimize uh, pipeline, pre-processing pipeline in terms of uh, memory usage, like RAM memory, I mean. Uh, because I did everything what, uh, I could do, I mean, like what I'm capable of and what I know that it's possible, but I think maybe there are some tricks to, to make it even faster. Maybe not faster, but like uh, smarter in terms of um, memory, memory footprint, so. Yeah, but, but you, you, so, know, uh, you, you know, I think limita current limitation on uh, Amazon is uh, like 32 GB uh, virtual machine or yeah, I, I'm running now on Amazon. The, 
one yeah I, i'm running the, i i can tell you uh just wait uh, i need to find it uh, it's uh it's like eight, eight cores and uh, 32 gb ram i think uh, wait, wait, wait. Where, where uh, here? Uh, wait. Let me share. Uh, share screen. Share. I'm running this sheet now. It's, yeah, it's it's wrong. Do you see? I mean, could you see it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's what three point nine. Would it be like terabytes? Yeah. No. It, right. Three point nine terabytes of RAM. Okay. Yeah, yeah but the, and what was, is the, what what is the footprint? Uh, yeah, I need uh, of yeah. the pipeline. Our pipeline. Just a moment. I need where we are. Okay, now it's doing here. Mm -hmm. I need. Okay, I need to check check it out later. Okay. Uh, I need, need duplicate session. Wait. Okay, can we do it later? Because now yeah, I'm sure, not, sure, it's a good idea. Yeah, um, I, I can check it. But I, I initially I started with uh, uh, with this instance. Let me know. Uh, it's, uh, it's something like uh, uh, T twenty four nano. Uh, Uh, 16, uh, I've forgotten, like something like that with uh, 100 something gigabytes uh, and it crashed. So it was less than 200 gigabyte and it crashed. So uh, Anton, I don't think we, we have this available. We have only 32, really. Uh, okay. but. We, we cannot use any instance bigger than that or mean i think so at least I saw, I saw some some limitation on amazon we have to check or probably uh, mm -hmm. anton can, can check mm -hmm. if there is some possibility to extend yeah because uh, sure. my understanding was that when we have credits i mean like some am amount of money so to say yeah. we can spend it on any kind of instance we need and they just price us with uh i think uh yeah it's probably um depends from uh zone time uh, from time zone yeah but uh i saw that th there is limitation in current uh, okay okay we, we can check it um, we can discuss it later i mean like it just, mm -hmm. it's just topic that we need to go through mm -hmm. and to cope with it and to find a solution uh, do you know do you know why the RAM is like just exploding like that? Yeah, because actually for each uh, process uh, in each process you have five lightweight lightweighted uh, science spacey models for each process, and therefore this those models are not seen as lightweighted anymore because like there's five of them in each process. You have one hundred processes, or depending on number of your CPUs, uh, therefore. For each, in each on each CPUs you have like those five models initialized, so it's a lot of RAM. And actually, multiprocessing a package, Python package, uh, is going to be bro is 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 break is being break broken. Uh, so yeah, that's that that's the. So uh, we're yeah. using the multiprocessing the same thing that Brandon used. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm I'm using what, Pathos, Pathos uh, multiprocessing. Pathos? It's a, a, uh -huh. yeah, a better version of original Python multiprocessing, but still, mm. it's uh, not about uh, like it's broken just because of the memory. I mean, like the official uh, uh, error message is sorry, guys, you're out of run. Uh, of so your in run. A, I mean, what I'm reading is is essentially the bottleneck is not the amount of uh, like threads you can start, right? Yeah. Not, not the CPUs, but just simply like the size of, of models yeah, to run. Yeah, because actually, because actually that in this case, number of CPUs must scale with enough amount of RAM per CPU. Because it's mm -hmm. like the process itself, it's not small one. 
It's like not that you have, you you are doing a lot of small things, so you need a lot of processes just to uh, to to to, uh, uh, to distribute those things mm. across CPUs. Actually, for each CPU, you have a, a huge uh, amount of uh, memory demand um, because you need just the whole model working on this one single CPU. Uh -huh. How many? Like how? What is the footprint of like one? Like if we do it in one thread, how much RAM do we need to get all of the current models? Uh, uh, it, it will be the same because it's it's just, I need to check it. Uh, that I, I can, can, can I tell you later? I mean like, because yeah, I, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm quite bad at multiprocessing. No, no, I, I guess so. That will be, what will be interesting for me just to kind of like, okay, so yeah, I can how estimate. much do you need? And like, and also per like model in a sense, right? So yeah. some of the models are small, some of them. So in a sense, what I see, what we need to do is, right, is uh, I'm thinking in terms of, you know, Lambda functions, like that type of like uh, microservices. So in a sense, what we need to do, we need to create this as a, as a function, like cloud function type of thing that takes the article, the JSON file, right? Like spans the instance of a function, grabs the document, kind of process this and spans up the results. And now if we could package at least something this way, then we could use again, I mean, probably Lambda function won't be not, not suitable because of the dependence on models and stuff. But ideally how we like multi, like how we process in parallel a lot, it just simply it's, not one instance, and within this fat instance, you do a lot of multiprocessing. It's whatever the smallest instance we need to kind of capture the models we want to run. And then you like you take the documents, you do scheduling of how you process them in which order, and then you kind of spawn a lot of instances and throw them like, so you parallelize on the level of splitting work, not, you, you, do you get my point? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, I mean, like, at least now how it works, it's just that each process, I mean, I, I take uh, the whole list of uh, paths to mm. those uh, JSON files, each, mm. uh, I, I, uh, I chunk them into a number of processes I have, and each process, mm. what it, it gets, it gets just the list of files, a, a list of paths to files. And uh, mm -hmm. for and he, uh, it, uh, he it is supposed to open one one file, do something about it, write it down. I mean, write it back uh, on the uh, disk, and mm -hmm. then open a new one. Uh, so that uh, at once there's just one file uh, being preprocessed. But the problem is, it's not about the file, how many files, because now it's in, in those terms, it's much more efficient than the, those data frame pandas stories, mm. because it's just one, 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 uh, one file at once. The problem is the whole uh, environment you use, not environment, the whole package you use to prep pre process uh, those, uh, mm. that file, because you need those uh, five models. And of course, when you run those five models on one computer in one thread or on one CPU, you don't see that on, on your computer. But imagine that because actually then the number of CPUs doesn't scale, doesn't scale with the, your, uh, your RAM memory. Uh, that's the problem. No, this is, I, I get it. That's what I'm saying. You like So right now you're trying to fit all of these processes that boost the RAM on one, one, on one instance, right? What I'm saying is, okay, if this is the problem, we need to find whatever the, like, uh, what is the good sweet spot for amount of these threads per instance, and now you spawn a lot of instances to run. After no, this. I have just a one instance. I have now just one instance, but a lot, but a lot of CPUs. So, and yeah. CPUs are What not I'm saying so is like one instance was one CPU with whatever amount of RAM is needed there, but now you will have like hundreds of them. So, I mean, you spawn whatever I don't the know how many, uh, whether it, uh, in term, economically, it's, it will cost uh, less than just to have one big instance with many CPUs. Uh, well, we know that well, one I think instance that... doesn't work. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, go, ahead. go ahead. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think what uh, Anton is getting at is since we what it seems like is we have a RAM limitation, right? On how big our CPUs can be RAM wise. So if we do like just make a bunch of instances, then we limit the amount of RAM per instance, and then we can actually run the thing. Yeah. Is, okay. that, what, is that what you're getting at? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just my question is how when we we buy when we rent multiple instances, if it will be also economical, economical. I mean, like in terms of finances. I mean, in terms of our credit points. Yeah. Uh, no, Lucas, just, this is really good point. I agree, but then again, right now we just need to figure out like how to fit it all in the process, and then we have essentially this uh, like sliding parameter that we're trying. So, what do we want? A lot of like smaller instances that are kind of fit in our task or one big instance that fits lots of our tasks. And okay. then whatever optimization point will be there, we will, you yeah. know. Yeah, okay, that. That, that, that's fair point. I mean, that's because very often now it's like when we have just one small instance or a couple of smaller instances uh, that are cheaper, but then we can, for instance, allow, uh, we can afford like two or three days of them running uh because we don't need those data frames today tonight but in two days it will be also fine uh and uh, mm -hmm. i just i just yeah. quickly checked about limitations so uh, i was wrong so the maximum available is 256 gb ram and 64 cores six okay so this I is the maximum uh, configuration of vm Okay. Uh, I think this is, this is something that you're running, right? Uh, uh, no, I, I tried, uh, but it was like 60, uh, 60 core, 64 cores yeah. and uh, 100 something uh, gigabyte, uh, giga. Okay, but, but we have 200. Okay. 56. So, so, we okay, so, so maybe it's something that we can try because it's twice much. Uh, yeah, and I, I try. Okay, I think I think we we can arrange this after. This yeah, month. I mean, the, mm, okay. Uh, just I I want to finish this one and I check uh, like the like the the maximum that I'm using now because for sure I am overfit. I mean, like it's too big for our data. But just I I took the biggest one to be sure that I can start to process like. I, I didn't have time to now to uh, like to experiment with thousand different in, instances. No, I, so actually uh, we already discussed what what will be a kind of winning strategy yeah. just to get uh, 100 records from uh, a metadata file, yeah. run it, check result, and uh, also uh, take estimation of time. Yeah. Uh, and after to run uh, the whole collection, I think. Yeah, I mean, like now, now I'm running this V19, so we will have V19, uh, and and then for V26, then yeah. we can discuss it. But the code is already. I mean, like the the things that I I suffered from last week about uh, pipeline not working, it's 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 solved. So but, now, by the way, what happened? To something with models? So yeah, I think that, like it's like multi-layered thing. One thing was probably I I, I had fi finally I had to to uh, reload all models like reinstall them mm -hmm. uh, with science space also so I I, I re ah re okay got it uh, reinstall everything that was and then I st and then I had changed a couple of things in the code also because there was some mess with var variables because mm -hmm. sometimes I had uh, uh, some results sometimes not. And now finally, I I have everything. I mean, like you, have, I have all UMLS. I, I want. Mm -hmm. Okay. So probably, if you uh, if it will be successful run, so we can get kind of delta between current latest collection and uh, V19, and uh, it will be probably I don't know like twenty thousand papers. Yeah. So we can just run it separately, and we can get it up to date. Yep. Good. Okay. So there, there are some <clears throat> other questions. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Yep. Um, and maybe this is out of the scope for this call. Uh, but Slava, when you and I were talking, uh, you were saying that 
the date, the metadata right now is classified as features? Yeah, so um, we have, we, 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 so we, we have um, all uh, metadata from Dataverse in, in DataFrame. Mm -hmm. So currently I'm, I'm finishing process that will keep it up to date. Mm -hmm. And I will start to publish on Dataverse as data set all metadata. Uh, so it will be, it will be a daily update. And by uh, data, you mean all the metadata from uh, the core data set that Kaggle's published? Yeah, it's a, no, no, it's not core data sets. It's from COVID data sets. Uh, okay. It's a, something that uh, we are harvesting from wherever, from different locations. Got it. So I will put uh, this data set in Dataverse and uh, we'll start to update it on a daily basis with uh, Airflow. And, uh, I need to classify all the uh, data sets based on information about variables and uh, uh, we need also to tune, fine tune uh, classifier because uh, we'll get some input from all tasks first. I think task risk is kind of perfect example. If we want to find all uh, risk related uh, data sets in our data collection, uh, that's something we should do first. Yeah. Is um, what does the data frame look like now? Is it ready to be fed into a classifier or yeah. are you still working on it? Yeah, it's ready to, to, to be uh, fed there, yes. Okay, and do we have any internal documentation on how we are defining uh, these different data sets? Like risk versus ties versus whatever? Yeah, 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 we, we have everything on, on Kaggle. And we, we also have uh, classifiers, current classifiers. Okay, could you point me to where we are um, kind of defining what goes in these different data sets? Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically it's on Dataverse in, in specific, um, boom. yeah, sub verses. Okay. Like, yeah, um, yeah, just, I will put it on, yeah, I, I can actually copy it here. Okay, great, because then if I can see kind of Oh, great, let's see this. All right, perfect. Also, we have, um, um, uh, we are running Collab, and uh, in Collab, you can see up-to-date versions of notebooks. So you can see actually how they got these results in, in the published in this data set. Okay, so are, do you have a Collab notebook that you're using to curate this yeah. metadata? Yeah, 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 uh, do you have access to Collab, right? I think I provided it. I think so, yeah. I don't have so, to use a virtual machine, right? No, it's a, a, a web service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, let me check um, API token, one second, and uh, yeah. Okay, I will put <laughs> API to uh, um, Jupyter uh, token in, in your uh, Slack, okay? As direct message. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, we, I think we need to go to another meeting, right, Anton? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, we, uh, we still have a couple of minutes. Yeah. To have a couple okay. Of okay. 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 Then we, I think to sum up, uh, we can continue on Slack regarding yeah. those different technical aspects mm -hmm. and yeah um, and we we have in the next meeting on on tuesday i think mm -hmm. okay yeah. so yeah. uh thank you very much uh i hope it, it was very uh, successful and fruitful uh, exchange yeah and uh, we are looking forward for results <laughs> yeah i hope i mean yeah I, I just uh because no uh, just to explain one thing that maybe will be disturbing of uh, that not for every sentence uh, there or there are all umls not umls categories because yeah. once that the model didn't discover anything i didn't put the empty list into but we can change it just by running a simple uh, routine to add uh, lacking categories no I think, I think it's perfect task for Hachatur to uh, check the quality of uh... yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, just, okay. 
yeah in this in this way it's like sparse uh, sparse in the sense that uh, I, I didn't add uh, empty categories mm -hmm. but then we have a list of all categories so we can fill in if it's somehow necessary yeah yeah and i would say that's better than uh what brendan did I just just filled like empty categories and uh, you can okay. see a lot of a lot of space was busy with some yeah okay it's other story yeah. because it was like a data frame and now mm -hmm. it's just uh json so it's just a list of lists mm -hmm. or list of dictionaries so you if you don't put anything so then when you run over you don't find it, so you can also check out, okay, it's not existent, so so simple is it. Uh, okay, uh, so once again, thank you very much, and see you again on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, bye. bye, -bye.